Okay, let's give you guys some more practice. So determine if this series will converge or if it will diverge. So press pause and have a go. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to show you an inefficient way of doing it. Um, there, there's still something that you can learn from, from doing it the inefficient way. And then right at the end, I will show you a, a, a better way of doing it. So um, so we, we, we are trying to determine if this will converge or if this will diverge. So we're going to use the ratio test. When it comes to the ratio test, we always need to compute this value here. So that will then give us this. So now um, now rewrite this as, um, as, as one block multiplying another block and then uh, and then now group these two together because it contains to the power of n to the power of n so you can write it neatly as the whole thing to the power of n and then uh, this e to the power of n e to the power of n uh, will cancel out here leaving you with e and then you've got your your natural log of uh, n plus one natural log of n plus one so from here that will then take you to here Okay, and then now, um, now so so now uh, now you've got one block multiplying another block. Um, so so this this block here is very similar to the previous video. You've got you've got the natural log. Uh, you've got the natural log graph that looks like this. So your n here, n plus one. Um, something to note is that um, this this graph always keeps on climbing. It's strictly increasing. So um, so when you when you get the the uh, when you when you get the height of uh, of n, well, the height of n plus one will always be higher than uh, than the height of n because it's a strictly increasing uh, graph. So uh, so so the denominator the denominator will always be bigger than the numerator, meaning that it has to be this this thing here has to be less than or equal to one. So so as it flattens out, it, it might um it it will approach one. Because if you look at this height, it is very similar to this height here. But then, but suppose it, it, it's like this. Suppose it's, it's really steep. Just suppose. Let's just say the height here is 7 and it's really steep. Let's just say the height here is, is less, not to scale, 800. So this height here is 7. This height here is 800. Well, 7 over 800, well, it's still, the, the, um, well, the, the, the point is that this thing here is trapped. Is um, it's always between um, between z between zero uh, it has to be greater or equal to zero, but it has to be less than or equal to one. Because here, when it flattens out like this, it's nearer to one. But when it's steep like this, you've got you've got seven over let's say eight hundred. So it, it is above. It has to be above zero. Um, it, it's not going downhill, so it's not going to be a, a, a negative. Um, so 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 this this thing here is um well we, 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 the, if you look at this whole thing here the the biggest the biggest thing that the biggest value that this thing could be is one so so now you can say the thing that we're trying to investigate so imagine this to be this block the biggest thing that this block could be is the number one so this well so it's so the biggest it could be is the number one one times this thing here has to be bigger or equal to this thing that we're trying to investigate Okay, and, and it has to be the thing that we're trying to investigate has to be bigger than zero. So now we can apply the squeeze theorem. Remember the squeeze theorem? If you have two, if you have a function, if you have a function that's always trapped in between the other two functions, and the limit uh, of the other two functions head towards the same place, then the middle function will have no choice but to have the same limit. So, if, uh, so if you look at this, the limit of this thing here, well, e is a constant. E is a constant. Uh, e is a constant, um, and the denominator keeps on getting bigger and bigger. So, so the limit of this thing is zero, and then uh, the limit of this at the bottom. Bear with me. Uh, hang on, bear with me. Zero. Um, so now, now uh, uh, the the limit of this thing is zero. The limit of this thing is zero. Uh, we are we 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 are trying to investigate the thing that we know nothing about, but we do know that it's trapped in between. What am I doing? Hang on. There. Oh, wait there. Sorry. Hang on. Oops. Sorry. Hang on. Hang on. Um. Bear with me. Bear with me. Uh. This. Uh. I ignore this part here. I might. I might have. Uh, I made a mistake here. Well, that will then take us to. Uh, to. Ah. Oh. 
bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. We we know that um, we know the limit of this thing here equals uh, uh, equals zero. Uh, this thing here equals zero. So the thing that we're trying to investigate, we know nothing about the thing that we're trying to investigate, but we know that it's trapped in between zero and zero. Therefore, the limit of this thing must be zero. Now, going back to the um, going back to the ratio test, it, when, when it comes to the ratio test, we always need to compute this value here. But we we just computed it. It's uh, it's zero. So when it comes to the ratio test, we always need to compute this value here. Well, the value here is actually less than less than zero. It's less than one. The value here is less than one. Therefore, the series will um, will converge. Our series here will converge. So a better so that's done now. Um, the, a better way of doing this would be this. Rewrite this as uh, as something to the power of n because here you've got to the power of n to the power of n. So rewrite this as this, and then use a the root test. So with the root test, you always take the nth root. So take the nth root. Um, so so when when you take the nth root of this, these two will cancel out, leaving you with just this. So uh, so so you've got to the power of n that they. they uh, the two here will cancel out, leaving you with this. Well, the limit of this thing equals zero because n tends to infinity, meaning the denominator will just get bigger and bigger. Well, the limit of this thing is um, is zero. So when it comes to the root test, you always need to compute this value here, which is this thing here written in, in a different way. Um, and then if if uh, if if our value here is less than zero. Then we know our series will converge. So an easier way of doing this would be to um, to use uh, the to use the root test. But I, I wanted to do it the inefficient way because there are some things that you can learn along the way. Okay.